again, gang. Today we are back in Toronto with the story of the legendary Smoke Dog. In my band door, trap house doing numbers. Trap, trap house doing numbers. Trap house doing numbers. Trap house doing numbers. Trap. We still buy the robber. North side, nigga. Still moving, proud of moving lava. Moving hot, nigga. Not rocking, proud of rocking Gucci. Rocking Gucci. I still slap it down on your bitch, Boosie. Ha. We still buy the robber. A gang feud was brewing between the Halal Gang, which is deeply rooted in Regent Park. G was still active in the neighborhood, and as soon as he returned from the Boy Meets World Tour, his chain was targeted by goons. Three people were shot, including a woman who was injured, and two men who were killed. Today police released their names, 21-year-old and 28-year-old Ernest. Smoke Dog was an up-and-coming star in Toronto's underground rap scene but growing up in the city's most notorious neighborhood brought many challenges. From losing loved ones to gun violence to engaging in shootouts, Smoke Dog's story is filled with hardships. Let's explore the trials and tribulations of the late rapper and discover how he became a significant figure in the city's rap scene. Smoke Dog, along with his mother, father, and nine siblings, was raised in Regent Park, Toronto's first community housing project. Today, Regent Park appears luxurious due to a two and a half million dollar revitalization project. But its legacy of gang violence and crime remains. Built in 1948, the neighborhood was designed to be a garden city with buildings facing inward, away from the city's noise and walkways replacing streets. The lack of commercial and recreational facilities led to its isolation and decline. By the mid-70s, a report cited a lack of recreational facilities, bored youth, and socioeconomic factors as reasons for Regent Park's struggles with drug use and gang violence. Smoke Dog's situation worsened when his father, Wayne Smart, known as Dookie, followed his own chaotic path. Dookie, from a blood-affiliated block called The Lanes, had a long criminal record. At 17, he faced a lifetime firearms prohibition after being shot at a nightclub in 1991. Two years later, he was acquitted of first-degree murder charges after claiming self-defense in a shooting. Dookie's legal troubles continued. He was acquitted in two separate cases in 1994 and 1995, one involving attempted murder and the other a home invasion and robbery. Smoke Dog was born in 1996, but his father's life in the streets didn't change. In 1999, Dookie was involved in a shootout at a townhouse in Pelham Park, losing his left eye and killing 30-year-old Delroy Barnes. After two years in pretrial custody, he was found not guilty. Smoke Dog's two older brothers inherited their father's street instincts, but not his luck with the law. Andrew Douglas, known as Ace, was convicted in 2013 for an armed robbery where the victim was shot but survived. Ace served an eight-year prison sentence. Smoke Dog's other, older brother, Jane Smart, also known as J-Dog or 10K, closely resembled Smoke Dog and shared a strong bond with him. J-Dog started as a promising basketball player, even training with NBA MVP Steve Nash, but his dream ended after high school. Despite his elusive profile, J-Dog was well-known and respected on the streets of Toronto. J-Dog had his share of legal issues. In 2016, police executed a search warrant at a residence linked to him, seizing a loaded Glock, cocaine, and cash. J-Dog evaded capture until 2018. Unlike his father and brothers, Smoke Dog aimed to break the generational curse. In the early 2010s, he entered Toronto's rap scene, hanging out with Regent Park rappers. 
He was part of the DGC, or Don't Get Close crew, pioneers of Toronto's rap scene. Smoke Dog's debut with DGC at 16 made a lasting impression. He continued releasing songs, but eventually parted ways with the group in 2013. His music slowed down until his best friend Anno booked a studio session for him in 2014. Two days after recording, Anno was killed in a targeted attack. Smoke Dog and his friends released the songs they recorded in Anno's memory, marking the start of his rise. Smoke Dog and fellow rapper Moji created a unique style that blended trap, grime, and Toronto's distinct sound. Their song still gained attention after Drake posted it on Instagram. Smoke Dog's hit single Trap House followed, solidifying his place in Toronto's rap scene. He formed the Halal Gang with Moji and other Regent Park friends, using music to escape and share their truths. Smoke Dog performed his first show in 2015, sponsored by Ovo at the historic Mod Club. The following year, Puffy L's hit single Bin Flexin, and Smoke Dog's OTN showcased their talent. Smoke Dog's remix of Panda further boosted his popularity. Despite their success, internal gang violence escalated in Regent Park in 2016. The Halal Gang's internal conflict led to multiple shootings and deaths. Despite the violence, Smoke Dog focused on his music, securing a feature with UK grime legend Skepta, an opening for Drake's 2017 Boy Meets World Tour. In 2018, Smoke Dog was killed in a confrontation outside a nightclub. His death was felt across the hip-hop community, with tributes from Drake, Charlie Sloth, and others. Smoke Dog's brothers sought revenge for his death, leading to further violence and legal issues. J Dog and Ace were involved in multiple shootings and arrests. In 2022, Ace was acquitted of murder charges, while J Dog faced multiple charges. The Smart family's tragedy continued with the disappearance and murder of their father, Wayne, in Grenada. Smoke Dog's older brother, Ace, has been acquitted of first degree murder. The jury agreed that he was acting in self-defense when he shot 30-year-old Michael Lewis six times, including twice in the head, in broad daylight in front of a bunch of people at Lakefront Park. During the two-week trial, the prosecution argued that Ace went armed to the memorial barbecue on September 2, 2018, intending to kill Lewis for disrespecting Smoke Dog. Prosecutors alleged that Ace approached Lewis, spoke to him briefly, and shot him dead within six minutes of arriving at the barbecue. Two witnesses testified that Lewis was on the ground when he was shot in the head, and a third witness said Ace held him by the collar and shot him again. With all that testimony against him, you might have thought it was over for him. However, his lawyer argued that he wasn't there for revenge, and that Lewis was actually the one who was paranoid. Apparently, Lewis had taken his chain back from Sva Smoke Dog. Smoke Dog, which Smoke Dog and his crew had taken from him. Seeing Ace, he got paranoid and was the instigator. Ace is about 140 pounds, and Lewis was around 200 pounds, so it's unclear how he could have taken his chain from him. 
Ace's lawyer, Richard Posner, also presented a video of Ace putting on cologne before going to the park, arguing that it showed he wasn't planning to commit a crime, as you wouldn't want to smell good if you were going to do a drill. It's some OG if the gloves don't fit, you must acquit type of defense if you ask me. Even though Ace was found not guilty, he won't be getting out right away. He's currently serving eight years for a 2013 home invasion robbery, where they allegedly broke into someone's home and shot the person when they tried to escape. Smoke Dog's story is a reminder of the power of art and music to transcend boundaries. Though he is no longer with us, his voice continues to inspire a new generation of artists to share their truths, chase their dreams, and create a better world through their art. Stay subscribed to Real Oppas for all the stories from the trenches. Stay locked in and stay dangerous.